Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to us today. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call forth our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, say, Father, I demand right now and I receive from you my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I, I, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's very, very important that you do. Like I told you, if you do, you are increasing the number of people that we are going to have access to. Because if you subscribe, when it come, when the video comes or it come up on your, when you're searching and then when your friends search, it will help. So the more people we have subscribed to our channel, the more viewership we are going to get. What does that mean? The more people are going to be blessed by the things you are being blessed with. And beyond subscribing to our channel, share this message also. Share it on WhatsApp, share it on your Facebook page. Just keep sharing it and God bless you for being a partner with me in spreading the gospel. Remember the Bible says, the Lord gave the word and great is the company that published it. I encourage you to join the company of publishers. Let's publish these things everywhere in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. So we are talking about the revelation of eternal life. You see, this was the whole essence of the coming of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you this. As we advance in life, and when we advance in life, we're also advancing in the things of God. We're also advancing in time. And don't ever think that God is sleeping. Now, there are lots of things happening in the world, lots and lots of things. The, the, the quality of faith is being degraded every now and then, is the truth. And this is the experience of life. A lot of things that would have been a taboo many years ago is now acceptable. I was talking to my wife recently, I said, and I told her, I said, this is, it does says the Lord. And, and I'm not ashamed to say this to you also. So I said, a time is coming when the church itself, now when I mean the church, I mean the body of Christians. I'm not talking about Jesus now. A time is coming when the church, we're discussing something, you know, about marriage and, and issues and that. So I said to her, I said, a time is coming when the church is going to discuss and accept that people can be polygamous. And I said, I said, is a dossier at the Lord. Now that doesn't mean that that's God's intention. I said, a time. Now when, when, when a prophet says a time is coming, it doesn't mean that's the mind of God he's speaking. He's telling you, as life is progressing, when a prophet says a time is coming, see what is actually said, as life is progressing, this is what's going to happen. So I said, I told, I was talking to my wife and I said, it's going to get to that point. And then they will remove that restriction. And I said, but well, this is, and a lot of people are going to say, we knew it, we said it. Eh, eh. People are coming to realize this truth. People are coming to, and I said, but you see, you know, Jesus said, because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Everyone who will be excited and saying, the thank God, I knew, you know, some people even say, I knew this revelation since. Oh, my pastor mentioned something like this before that there is nothing wrong, you know, and things like that. In the midst of all that, there is a remnant that the Lord is keeping for himself. Now here's what I'm telling you this, what I'm telling you. 
There are many things that are going to change. There are many things that are going to become acceptable. But let me tell you this so that you hear that someone mentioned it to you. In the midst of all that that is going on, just like now, people are saying we're not supposed to tie as well. People are saying, yeah, finally, we knew, we knew. Okay, continue. There is a people whom the Lord is taking aside and he's teaching them the truth about all these things. So they realize the depth of truth. And what does that truth do to them? It constrains them. It puts you in line. So when, for example, you hear, maybe you're a married man, and then you hear, I mean, from trusted teachers now, that there's nothing wrong with polygamy. If a man wants to marry more than one wife, he's free to marry more than one wife. And then you go, Ha! Ah, are you serious? Hey, so I've been suffering. Aha. Uh -huh. It just revealed what was in your mind all this while. You see, that thing that was in your mind, that was the problem. So you are able to hold yourself. The fact that you are holding yourself doesn't mean you are righteous. So as we advance, in the things of God. As we advance in life, this is what's going to happen. The plugs are going to be pulled out. The plugs are going to be pulled out. Now, each time the plug is pulled out, men are at liberty to do whatever they want to do. And guess what that's going to be? They will do what is in their hearts. So events will reveal their hearts. You read the book of Revelation. The Bible says the devil is going to be caged for a thousand years. Think about this. Everybody that is saying the devil is their problem. 1,000 years, the devil is going to be caged. After a 1,000 years, the devil is going to be released. And guess what's going to happen after? One, not one day, not 10 days, not 100 days, not 100 years. A 1,000, you know what it is, a 1,000 years? Think how many generations would have existed that would have wiped off the memory of the seat of the devil. But after a 1,000 years, the devil is released. And he was able to convince, is it to thought of, of the nations? To thought. Think about it. It means the devil was not the problem. Their hearts had evil right into it. So when the devil is released, it was so easy to connect with them again. Say, hey, yes. And that's what God is going to be doing. He's going to be taking out the plugs. He's going to be taking out the plugs. Now, when he takes out the plugs, people's hearts are revealed. When he takes out the plug, people, and people will come with so much revelation on these things. But guess what? Their heart is revealed. But in the midst of it all, a remnant is being prepared for the Lord. Those ones, they don't need your revelation to live righteously. They don't need it. Because they hear from the master themselves and they follow the master. The Bible speaks of those who follow the Lamb. They follow him. It will not be a congregational thing, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you the truth. It will not be. Jesus said it. It will be just like the days of Noah. Everybody was enjoying themselves, eating and drinking. While they were eating and drinking, the ark was being built. Until the day, the last nail was nailed on that ark. Then God says, okay, it's time to bring all the people that are supposed to be in the ark. He chose the people that will be in the ark. Nobody entered that ark by chance. No animal entered that ark by chance. God chose both the animals and the human beings that should be in the ark. He chose them. If God is going to choose a million people on the earth, will you be one of them? Forget what preachers say. Listen, listen, do not be deceived. Don't be deceived. The Bible says they will come and preach liberty, but as they preach you liberty, they bring you into bondage. I shared with you yesterday. I thought I, thought I was experiencing liberty when it comes to the anointing oil. I felt that, that is, well, come on now, we, we carry the anointing inside of us. We don't need a bottle of oil. But then, now I enjoyed that. But then, I came to realize that that knowledge 
that promised me freedom actually brought me into bondage that I could not relate with another true believer because he's using anointing oil. I realized, I realized that, that oh, come on, you condemn these people and you condemn because you don't know. See, that ignorance was a bondage. I saw a lot of people are in bondage. They think they are liberty. Brothers and sisters, it is only Jesus that can make you free. No preacher will bring this freedom for you. So Jesus said to those Jews in Acts, John chapter 8, he says, if you continue in my word, then you shall be my disciples indeed. Notice, if you continue in my word, it is if you come to my word, if you continue. So now you have come. You remember what I said about giving him your heart. Now you have come. Then he says you have to continue in his word. It's not continue going to church. Continue with Jesus. Continue with Jesus. He directs your mind. He directs your steps. He orders you where you should go to. Brothers and sisters, he will take you into places you never knew you will ever be. See, hey, why would he take you there? That's his part for you. And then you begin to realize, I used to think this is wrong. Ah, why am I? Now he, no, he says, if you continue, you will be my disciples indeed. Why is that? Because you've kept following him. You kept following him. Then he says, and you shall know the truth. So you don't know the truth from day one. You see that now? And then he said, when you, then he says, you shall know the truth. And when you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Now, that's my practical. Like, I'm not just anointing. Several things I came to understand. Then I realized, wow. You see, when you become judgmental about people, you think they are in bondage. You don't know you are the one that is in bondage because you don't understand them. Now, I'm not saying everything every other person is doing is right. Of course, there is abuse. There is, there is false things. Yes, there is. Don't, don't be deceived. There is. But you see, in the midst of all these things, same thing, you know, why, do people rise, why did people rise up against tithing and, and giving of offerings and, and things like that? It was because of the abuse. But you don't say because there is an abuse, you want to crash everything down. God is not... <laughs> You know, you know, I think I've shared this on this broadcast before. And I said this. There is no such ministry that God has given to correct. Um, you know how people come and say, God has sent me to chase out false preachers. God has sent me to bring correction to the body of Christ. Huh? Be careful when you say those things because... I don't think God sent you to do that. You took it based on your own passion. You took it as a ministry on yourself. And why am I sharing this with you? There are persecutions that come with such um, attitude or ministry. And when those persecutions come, you will begin to depend on God to deliver you from them. But because he did not send you in the first place, you're going to have a hard time dealing with the issues that come up with it. Yes. Paul faced it. The great apostle Paul faced it. God never sent Paul to Jerusalem. Never sent him. In fact, warned him against going to Jerusalem. But out of his own passion, he did go to Jerusalem. And guess the saddest thing? In Jerusalem, he did not, he was not able to preach to one soul. No manifestation of God took place while he was in Jerusalem. He did not even as much as heard the voice of God until he left Jerusalem. It was when they were on the sea, the word of the Lord came, opened up to him again. Go read your Bible. The great apostle Paul, yes. See that now? Why? He was led by his own passion for his people. 
Be careful when passion is leading you and not the Holy Spirit. Be careful. John the Baptist did the same thing and got into trouble. Some of you have wondered how come God did not save him from, from prison? How come God did not save him from the hand of Herod? Imagine a great prophet like that filled with the Spirit of God from the mother's womb. It was a little girl that asked for his head and his head was taken off. Where is the anointing? How did God, how did God, you know, sometimes you say, how, why? It's very simple. He followed passion. He stopped following the leading of the Holy Spirit. So much so that you remember he sent his disciples to go ask Jesus, are you the one or should we expect another? And Jesus replied him, blesses he who is not offended in me. I pray, I pray you don't get yourself into trouble in the name of ministry and start looking for everybody to come and bail you out. I pray you don't get to that point because see, at that point, even God most likely will be silent on you. John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus. Have you thought about it? His cousin was in prison. This is Jesus. He had started his ministry, so he couldn't have said, my time have not yet come. You mean Jesus could not ask the Father to send an angel? One angel was enough to free John from prison. He did it to Peter. He did it to the other disciples. He did it to Paul and Silas. But Jesus rather sent him a message. Bless is who he that is not offended because Jesus knew he was getting into offense in his heart. Meanwhile, all John could have done was to repent before the Lord. You see, that's the problem. You think you're doing a righteous thing. So it's difficult for you to understand that you need to repent. That the fact that the Father have not sent you on this mission, you took that mission upon yourself based on your own passion. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The Lord doesn't have any such ministry of correcting or attacking false prophets. False prophet, he said it. False prophet will come. They are not your problem. They are not your business. Your business is preach the truth. You see the false prophet and those that will believe in them, they are like them. They are from the same group. Preach the truth to them, they will never hear. The false prophet will preach, they will hear. They are like their father, the devil. I'm telling you the truth. Preach the truth. Those that are of the truth will come to you. Keep your focus on the truth. Preach what God has said. Exalt the name of Jesus. Those that belong to the truth, they will hear the sound of your voice and they will come to you. But don't think attacking false prophets will make them reduce. They will increase for that. And what will it do to you to bring frustration to your heart? You will go and find out how come you're letting all these people. Uh, he's not letting them. He's already said they will come and they are here. I pray someone is receiving understanding today. Follow Jesus. He is the one that will open your eyes and you will know the truth. The truth will bring you into the place of liberty. Then you will understand a lot. Then you will be quiet about a lot of things and keep your focus on Him. Don't let things distract you from Him. Don't let offense distract you from Him. Many preachers are offended. Because they felt God should have answered them in certain situations, but he didn't. But God did not even send them there. Be careful. Be careful. I hear the Spirit of God say, I should tell you this. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He will take you by the hand. He will lead you into the place that you are supposed to be. And you will magnify his name. I just feel somebody needed to hear this. So that's why I said, share this message. And let everyone around your sphere hear the truth. Let them hear. And whatever they do with it becomes their business. God bless you. My time is up. I pray that the Spirit of God will deliver you from the trouble that you are about to get yourself into. Let Him deliver you from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.